Yo, what is up guys? This is Rise and welcome to a special video. It's going to be a longer one where I'm going to be recapping my North American International Championship run where I go all the way to the finals and you're not going to want to miss the last match against Wadaj if you haven't seen it already. This is going to be a longer video, uh, so feel free to sit back, grab a snack, pause the video and, uh, and enjoy. But... This was a really awesome weekend this past weekend. I already did a stream recap. If you want to see like a three and a half hour stream recap on my Twitch, feel free to go watch the VOD there. But I'm going to uh, break it down here for you on YouTube separately. And hopefully you guys enjoy. So without further ado, let's get into the recap. And I'm just going to first start off by... Starting in Milwaukee three weeks ago, um, rather than North, rather than the North American Championship in Columbus, because in Milwaukee, I had my worst regional performance ever. I went two and two overall. I lost to Leo Geo round one on stream. Um, I was able to win here against JD. I beat a local water bug in a very closely contested match, and then Battle Bill, who many of you I'm sure know, fellow content creator, got me two to zero. So two and two. In Milwaukee was definitely my worst performance ever at a regional um, and if you think about like the kind of expectations I have of myself and the confidence level I was playing at if you look at my last seven regionals dating back to last year I won Milwaukee last year so it's about a year ago right I won Milwaukee last year I placed tied ninth at the world championship I got third place in Arlington I got fifth place in Orlando. I won Knoxville. And then, of course, two and two here in Milwaukee. So just really strong performance after strong performance. And then a two and two, it definitely takes a, a blow to your confidence a bit. You're like, hmm, what went wrong? And what I think I identified as what went wrong with my performance in Milwaukee is um, it was it was the new update, it, the the Go Battle League and, and the new move update with Trevenant being nerfed had just updated on a Thursday, I think. And then the tournament was Saturday. So it, it's the same for everybody, right? No one had a ton of time to prepare for the new meta, uh, myself included. And the team I ran was just way too safe, in my opinion. I had nothing on my team that really was threatening or offensive towards the opposition. I ran a super bulky team, Double Steel, Registeel, G-Fisk. Altaria, um, Metacham, Lantern, and Sableye. The only thing that wasn't like uh, completely bulky on my team was Sableye. And I felt like that didn't suit my playstyle. I feel like my playstyle uh, is very much taking, finding ways to take an advantage at certain points in the game. And with those super bulky Pokemon, they're not really threatening my opponents and I'm not giving myself as much of a chance to take an advantage early in the game so as we were preparing for milwaukee and we're gonna get into the recap here of the first battle soon um actually i take it back i will show you the uh the bracket um so this was the team i decided to run in columbus ohio for the north american championships and I would say four of these picks are relatively standard with two sort of off meta picks. The most off meta pick being Charizard. Metacham is probably the most common Pokemon you'll see. Um, it's hard not to bring it. I think you have to find uh, an interesting strategy or maybe a separate counter user if you're not going to bring Metacham, uh, especially with the current update. I used to actually not run Metacham very often. I only had run it once or twice, but with the Trevenant nerf... Um, I think Metacham got even stronger. So I brought Metacham. Altaria was my flyer of choice, mainly for opposing Shadow Swamperts, um, to have at least one hard check to Swampert. If I go Noctowl there, Swampert safe swap is kind of safe against my team. I elected for Registeel. as a little bit of a harder check to Noctowl, in my opinion, than to Galarian Stunfisk is. Lickitung as a safe swap. I know that Metacham is on almost every team. And I liked Lickitung's ability to kind of soft lose that matchup or even win the zero shield scenario. Um, 
or for some teams, let's say they don't have a Noctowl, sometimes Metacham is like easy to lure out with Lickitung to set up your Steel type in the back. I went, now here was the key to this team. I went with two powerful closers. In my opinion, along with Shadow Venusaur, I think the only that's probably the only other one you can argue right now. I think these are the two best closers in the open Great League. Shadow Charizard and Shadow Swampert. And also, one thing I thought of behind this team was I wanted to make sure my team was really good against the Paulasha Elite, a mind joke team, which featured Alolan Sandslash, Shadow Alolan Sandslash. And this team does really well against that team where Swampert is pretty much unchecked and Charizard is relatively unchecked as well. Because I knew a lot of people would probably be copying that team considering Paulasha swept the Torino Regional and Elite swept, or I, I guess I shouldn't say swept, but won the, um, won the Fresno Regional with that team. So I wanted to make sure my team was good against the Elite Paulasha, a mind joke team. And I just wanted to have some powerful closing power as well because I felt like one reason I struggled in Milwaukee was I had nothing that was super offensive or attacking. And with that said, we take a look at the bracket from day one. I arrive in Columbus Thursday night. The, the tournament started on Friday. Had a nice dinner with some of my stadium elite teammates. It's Axon, Arrow, Shadow Brady, among others. Jangles. Um, I think Stark and Mason were at another table. But it took, there were a lot of technical issues day one. Um, you probably saw some people disgruntled on Twitter. It wasn't the judges' fault. The judges were doing everything they could, and I really appreciate the judges. But I was supposed to start at 9.50 a.m., and we were trying to log into the app for about 40 minutes. And then after not being able to get in the app, as other people were having the same issue, they had to delay everything. The loser's bracket said they wouldn't play until tomorrow, and it wasn't until about 1 p.m. Um, I played my first match. I won game one after leading Medi into Sableye. I lost game two after leading Swampert into Altaria, and I remember game three, I was in a pretty commanding position, and my opponent lagged out, so we decided to replay it, and then in the rematch, I was in a pretty commanding position, and my opponent lagged out, so we had to replay again, and we had to switch tables. Um, and luckily by a sliver of health, like two HP, I was able to close out game three in a pretty crazy play. I actually completely sacrificed my shadow Charizard because it was the Medi mirror in the lead. And I figured against my opponent's team, my Lickitung, once the Medi was gone, could be pretty much everything in the back up a shield. So I like completely sacrificed my Charizard to a zap cannon and Lickitung was able to lick down the little remaining health of a Registeel. And then Lickitung was able to beat Altaria in the back. So it was a crazy round one. And it goes to show you, as I end up making a deep run in this tournament, I won round one in a game three by two HP. I very easily could have lost round one. I played a guy by the name of Jordy round two. He was a really nice guy. Had his like little daughter with him. I think he was a local and was able to win that matchup, I think, um, relatively convincingly. And that set us up for a round three match with the well-known Kevin Saludaris, this man right here. And um, I will uh, mute the casters. I'll probably, we'll probably listen to the casters sometimes during this recap. But for now, we'll just stick to my commentary. And I'll put my face, I think, in the middle. Um, as we take on Kevin and Kevin, I've met many times before, really nice guy, pillar of the community, always with his motivational, uh, speeches on Twitter. And, um, I think this was my only match on stream for day one. And what do you know? One of my strategies behind my team is it is good against the elite Paul Asha, a mind joke team. What is Kevin running? He's running the elite Paul Asha, a mind joke team, Registeel, Noctal, Shadow Slash, Medi, Sableye, Shadow Swampert. And my team, my Swampert's pretty much unchecked. My Charizard is really only afraid of Sand Slash. And when shields are down, of course, Blast Burn is just going to melt the Sand Slash. But unfortunately, Shadow Charizard is so frail that, like, Ice Punch from Sand Slash, like, they can pretty much, sh like, do Shadow Claw damage, Ice Punch. And if you don't shield, you're going to get farmed down. They can just shield and farm down. So it's not a great matchup there for Charizard, but 
Charizard, and Swampert is so dangerous against Kevin's team. And we are going to get into it. So game one, I lead Charizard into a Sableye. And uh, I like this matchup for the most part. Gonna, of course, shield. This would knock out. <laughs> Either knock out or leave me with like a sliver of health. Um, Charizard definitely requires shields. But the thing is, although you have to often go down shields with Charizard, you're gonna get those shields back or inflict a lot of damage. I go for the Blast Burn knowing that um, Dragon Claw Kevin would barely survive. So I knock out the Sableye. In comes Slash. I'm only going to get to one move. Well, actually, I could have gotten off Double Claw, it looks like. But I just go for the safer play. Guarantee the shield or the knockout. Um, and this is a little bit awkward because Licky does pretty well against Slash. But I don't really have much pressure against it. Kevin swaps into Reggie. And I don't want to swap my Reggie down a shield. Um... So I actually decide to go for the catch, and I make a, a pretty nice catch on the Zap Cannon. And now at this stage in the game, if I can win CMP against his Reggie, I feel like I'm in a pretty good spot. And check out what happens here. I'm tapping on the Focus Blast. You see, I'm tapping on the Focus Blast, and the game, like, stutter lags. It's not a huge deal. It doesn't really affect things in the end. But look, you see where I'm tapping? I'm tapping on the Focus Blast. And the game stutter lags, and I actually do a, a second, I actually do an extra lock on because of the game stutter lags. So, I mean, as you're going to see here, the way this plays out, it, it wouldn't have mattered. But I focus blast here. Kevin's forced with the decision if he wants to shield or not. And he is going to um, shield as well. This is going to come down to a charge move priority. My Reggie's got a decent amount of attack. I'm hoping I win CMP. I lose CMP, and I'm like, uh-oh, this is not good. This is a lot of health on the Reggie for my Lickitung to try and get rid of. So I'm going to come in with Licky. Um, I do seem to have the Lick Breakpoint where I'm doing two damage per Lick instead of one damage. That is significant. I'm just going to use my Judgment to gauge how much this Body Slam does. Not quite enough. So here I'm going to commit to the Power Whip. To try and get rid of this Registeel. And is this going to be enough to knock out the Reggie? Not quite. But two licks actually does the trick. Kevin is upset. He feels like he's that might put him in a bad spot. But remember, I just had to expend all my energy to get rid of Reggie. And this Sand Slash already had a move stored. So this Sand Slash is essentially up a move against my Lickitung. What normally is a, a pretty confident matchup for Lickitung right now is looking a little bit suspect because I don't think double body slam is going to be enough to knock out the Sand Slash. I go for one here. I know he's going to get to Ice Punch before I can reach Power Whip, so I'm just going to have to settle for a second body slam. Body slam chunks, but doesn't quite do half of the remaining health. I think chat was thinking I was going to win this, but I knew I was not going to win this game. And uh, I say good game there for a very close back and forth game. If I had been able to win the charge move priority against his Registeel, I think I win that. But that's a huge part of the game is charge move priority and uh, wasn't in my favor in that mirror match. So we fall to a 0-1 deficit against Kevin, the last Salyadaris. Now I'm thinking, hmm, okay. I uh, had to go down a shield early. Maybe I'm better off saving my shields for Charizard in the back. And that's one thing over the course of this tournament I started to recognize in my play is Charizard seems to be more effective in the back than in the lead. Because in the lead, they might like be perfectly fine taking shield advantage. And then I'm playing down a shield for the rest of the game. But in the back... It'll help me dictate where I can best utilize that powerful Charizard. So here we go. Let's see. Still thinking. Still thinking. I also took a lot more time in my early matches than my later matches. My later matches, I like just kind of was playing very relaxed. Playing very off of feel. 
instead of writing every possibility down. In game number two, I lead Swampert into Sandslash. And check it out here. This may seem pretty simple. And once again, for this recap, I'm going to be breaking things down, pausing. I know some of you guys like just battle, 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 two times speed, two times speed, more battles, more battles. Ah! I'm going to be breaking things down a little bit more analytically in this video, which I know some of you guys will appreciate. So he swaps Sableye. Two major things here that you want to do. You want to make sure you get off your Hydro Cannon before six Shadow Claws, because otherwise you're letting him catch up. This gives me a free one turn denial in a sense. Um, that I can take advantage of. And also, I don't have an obvious response to Sableye. So it's very much not a U-Swap, I-Swap situation. I have a Metacham in the back. As long as I can win this matchup, I can align my Metacham with Sandslash, which is going to be tough for Kevin to overcome. So basically, two things there. He swaps. I want to make sure I get off my move first. And also, I don't need to swap out because I have an even stronger answer for the Sandslash in the back. Sableye, going to get a shield back from me. And here I'm posed with the decision. Do I go for the Earthquake to knock out? Or do I bait with the Hydro Cannon? I felt like Hydro Cannon was the safer play in case of a shield. Because even if he calls it, I know I can um, I can shield and mud shot down here. So a nice call from Kevin. This is going to give him a shield advantage. He won't be able to retain Switch. But he will get a shield advantage. The problem for Kevin is Swampert is so spammy and generates energy so quickly that I'm going to come out of here with almost two Hydro Cannons. And two Hydro Cannons is nearly lethal for the Noctowl. If I was saying like what... Oh, I think Kevin got denied there, which is unfortunate for him. If I was to say what Kevin could have done here, I think the only play maybe would have been to sack the Sand Slash. But of course, his... From his point of view, he might not be thinking I've got double Sand Slash counters with Medi. So Kevin was definitely calling something else in the back. Perhaps Charizard and something else. He swaps Sand Slash and then the game is just over. So a pretty commanding game number two. Um, which is going to set up a decisive game number three. One to one. This is round three of Group F winners. By the way, your boy did not get a single buy. Some people got three buys because, unfortunately, with the air quality situation in the United States, uh, there's a lot of flights that were canceled. So a lot of people couldn't make the trip out here, which is really sad. I know Bird Power, a fan favorite, wanted to was planning on playing at NAIC and didn't get to make the trip out. Uh so yeah, some people got like two or three buys. Your boy got no buys, but that's all right. In life, you never want to take the easy way out. And uh, here we go. Game three, Registeel Mirror. But you see my back line. I didn't really plan on this, but I see the Reggie lead. And I'm like, I'm going to swap Swamper. I have two better answers. So in, in the moment, I see the Reggie lead. I'm, I just react. I'm just, I'm going Swampert. Um, because I know Swampert will force him out of here. And he actually goes into Sableye. Now, I think Kevin should have gone Metacham here. If he goes Metacham, it makes things a little bit more uncomfortable for me. But I don't know if it would have really mattered in the end. Because I probably would have just been comfortable losing that matchup and then wing attacking down. Which would have been really hard for him to overcome. But... He comes in with Sableye. I'm going to do the same thing as before. Bake the Hydro Cannon. Kevin calls it once again. Nice reads from Kevin. Going to throw on the charge move priority. Um, it had been revealed that I win CMP earlier. So I was perfectly fine doing this. And I do have enough energy here. And this is where like that perfect over farm is going to come in handy. Because check out how this plays out. I am down a shield. He can't come in with Reggie. So he has to reveal his third Pokemon. And it is the Metacham. And I get to two Hydros. If I had farmed one less, I probably don't get to this double Hydro Cannon. Which is going to be really significant here. He is going to be forced to shield. And now I'm put in an awkward spot. Like, this Metacham has, what, seven counters? 
I don't want to have to shield my Charizard and then be shieldless, so I actually come in with my Reggie, and I'm ready to swap when he swaps. Because I can't, excuse me, I can't allow his Reggie to get too much of an energy head start. So I swap really quickly there. I only gave his Reggie maybe one extra lock on of a head start. One or two. I'm forced to shield this, of course. This would, <laughs> this would definitely knock out my Charizard. No debuff. No debuff. I, I think Blast Burn probably KOs anyway, even with the debuff. So I don't think that was a huge deal. But I go for the Blast Burn here. Kevin honestly plays to his win condition of calling an unnecessary Dragon Claw bait. But I knew I could outpace. Um, this is a little bit risky by me and a little bit sloppy, if I'm being honest. Probably was better just to throw my claw right away to guarantee I get it off. But I thought I would live, and luckily I did. If I don't live that, yikes. But, and then also another sloppy play is not to just throw the blast burn. For some reason, I threw the claw. Kevin lets it go, but the lock ons here are actually going to be enough to farm down the Medicham. And that is going to be a good game against Kevin. Kevin, always a really solid battler. I play him in GBL all the time, and it's become like an inside joke with uh, the Tof Town Discord server. Sof Tof, my friend, I'm sure some of you guys know. And um, it's it's become like an inside joke because we queue in GBL a lot, and Kevin will say GG's <laughs> after we play. And uh, I know it's become a bit of a meme where uh, I don't always... I don't always love when I get GG DMs after I after I lose, but I know it's all in good fun. So that brings us to game number two. On uh, well, after after the Kevin match. So here it is. I, I able to beat Kevin. After Kevin, I played Afi and beat him in a 2-0 fashion in the winner's semifinals of Group F. So that puts me into the Group Finals of Group F, which, because of the technical issues, they decided to delay Group Finals to day number two. This was a three-day tournament, so they had some wiggle room to work around with. And that brings us to day number two, where I was playing against Conky. And Conky I wasn't familiar with, but when I'm unfamiliar with someone, I tend to... Look them up on Sylph, see if they have Sylph experience. And I saw Conky has a 72% win rate on Sylph, with this, which is extremely impressive. So that just tells me I'm dealing with someone that really knows their stuff. And it's going to be a difficult task. But Conky is also running the Palasha Elite team. I think I end up playing this team three times over the course of this tournament. And my kind of strategy behind my team of bringing something that I know does well against this team um, worked out well. The Swampert lead worked out well against Kevin. And also, if I'm playing someone... So Conky had the had the slight advantage... I mean, I have the team advantage here, but he had the advantage of watching me play yesterday, whereas Conky hadn't been on stream. And I always want to, like, run... If someone has the advantage of watching me play on stream against their same team, that's actually happened to me multiple times now... Um, I don't want to run the same exact lines I ran against that team before, of course. I want to make some adjustments. So I figured Noctow was a very possible lead, but my Swampert is safe against everything. And against this Noctow lead, I am perfectly comfortable losing it and just going for shield advantage. I know I win the zero shield scenario here against the Noctow. And I am perfectly comfortable playing that out. Conky goes for the Shadow Ball, knowing it does more raw damage than Sky Attack and not expecting me to shield. It doesn't affect things too much, though, because I am going to get to double Hydro Cannon anyway. Even if he goes Sky Attack, I don't think I get to a third Hydro Cannon. He actually puts up a shield. For a brief moment, I thought about just instant swapping my Charizard there, but then I was like, nah, I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to um, just let Swamper get farmed down. And come in here with my Registeel and force him to probably give up switch advantage. So there's two possibilities here in my head. Either he gives up switch into something like a Metacham against my Reggie. In which I can hard punish him with Charizard. Or if it's something neutral, I could just stay in and save two shields for Charizard. Because what's going to hard counter my Charizard on his team? Nothing. So I see the Sableye and I just stay. 
And I'm perfectly comfortable staying here and committing no protect shields. Staying here, committing no protect shields. I also, if possible, do not want to allow Sableye to reach a foul play on my Charizard because I know his Noctow has energy. I land the zap, no debuff. By the way, I'm no conspiracy theorist, but I felt like I felt like the zap cannon debuffs rates were uh, were not 67% this weekend. It seemed like it was like 12 and a half percent. Um, I barely survive. I swap and I very fortunately KO with that third wing attack, which doesn't allow Conky to get off the foul play. And this sets me up in a pretty good position. Charizard with two shields. So menacing. Um, I could have thrown on CMP there, but once again, I know that I want energy for a potential Sand Slash. And I also know he's going to try and catch a Dragon Claw here. So I'm just a little bit patient. I'm just a little bit patient. And then he swaps. And this puts me in a good spot. Conky looking up, knowing this is kind of a tough situation for him. And from here on out, after I get the shield, it's pretty simple. I could have theoretically thrown one more wing attack here. But I just wanted to get rid of this. Because I know if I can just get rid of this, I still have a shield. And I can outpace the Noctow to a Dragon Claw. Boom! Blast Burn <laughs> probably knocks out about two Alolan Sand Slash. And uh, can simply use my Protect Shield here and get to the Dragon Claw to take out Naki T and Charizard. Showing that he's a flyer that ought to be respected just as much as the Noctow. Who's a little bit more common, probably a little bit more consistent. But I think Charizard allows for maybe like a higher skill cap. Like there's only so much you can do with a Noctow. Noctow's going to be really safe, really consistent, um, really bulky. Charizard makes your opponents think twice. They give me a little shout out here. There was a few production miscues. <laughs> they say Arlington Regional finalist. I was not a finalist. I was a uh, top three. Just short of finalist. And here we go. Thinking about the next game. Locking in. And what do we got here? We got Altaria into Medicham. Interesting. So I don't personally love this matchup. And if you look at the back line, um, if he wins switch advantage, it looks pretty tough for me. Because he can just align Sableye with Medi. And then uh, Noctowl with Swamp. So... I take the Ice Punch. I throw my Sky Attack. I will presume he's going to shield this. Which he does. Conky going to over farm. Very nice over farm. Throwing right before my Sky Attack. Excuse me. And um, I decide to let this go. Take my shield advantage for Swamper. And Swampert and Charizard, as we've talked about, both just super good closers against his team. He goes directly into his hard counter. If he had swapped Noctowl here, I think this would have been a tougher match for me to win. Or, honestly, if he had just stayed in. If he had just stayed in, I think that would have been tough for me as well. I'm going to over farm here quite a bit. And I'm going to go for the EQ. I want to get rid of this Sableye if possible. Earthquake lands, knocks out the Sableye, and I still have a decent chunk of health here on my Swampert. He knows I have a Metacham in the back, so Conky here actually elects to let his Metacham go, thinking Noctowl might be able to sweep here. But Swampert being so spammy is going to be able to get off the Hydro Cannon. And uh, I'm not sure what does more off the top of my head, a Hydro Cannon here or an Ice Punch. But he shields the Hydro Cannon. It's probably comparable damage. Actually, Hydro Cannon probably does more, just based off of my feeling. And here is a bit of a misplay for me. In my head, I'm thinking the Sky Attack is more likely here than the Shadow Ball. And I know he's going to get to one anyway, but he actually goes straight for the Shadow Ball. Bit of a miscue from me. 
bit of a miscue back here from Conky. There's no reason for him to throw the Sky Attack. He's never going to get to two moves here. So he probably should have just committed to Wing Attack damage. But as you're going to see, based off the health of my Metacham, one Wing Attack, one extra Wing Attack wouldn't have KO'd anyway. And I do have the Double Ice Punch, which is going to be enough to knock out the Noctal. So that matchup... Um, I think if Conky played that just a little simpler, maybe to stay in, would have been a little bit tougher for him to uh, win. But actually, I take I don't know about that, actually, because let's say he stays in, he lands a Psychic on my Medi, I farm down, he comes in save. Swampert up a shield could really put in some work there. So I think it was just a good strategy. And GG's to Conky. So we beat Conky. That's the that was the group F final. So that puts us into sort of the top cut, the top 16, where our next opponent was going to be Crimson. Crimson did a hilarious interview with uh Speedy and Gabby. We were all watching and laughing along. Crimson, a fellow content creator, I encourage you to check out his stream, Crimson K19. And um, he's known as just like a really funny personality in the community, but I think he's also a terrific battler. And he was able to get to, let's see, hopefully I didn't go past it already. He was able to get to top 16 with an extremely spicy team compared to mine. And uh, here we go. So I didn't get to see Crimson play on stream, but I actually watched back his, his last match from the stream just to get an idea of what he was running. And he I knew he was running Charm Whimsicott. Um, and he never revealed the Nine Tails, but I felt like it had to be Powder Snow. Because if you look at his team, he's kind of weak to flying if it's not Powder Snow. Like Metacham, Swampert, Whimsicott. Um Dunsparce is his only flying answer if it was Charm, so I felt like it had to be Potter Snow. And he's got the double shadow closers as well. Um, so I felt like Dunsparce looked pretty good against my team. It beats Altaria, beats Charizard, beats Licky, and does okay against Reggie. So I felt like it was a very possible lead, and I actually was able to call the lead here and lead Swampert. Um, which is probably my best check along with Metacham for the Dunsparce. Um... Crimson throws on alignment here, which I don't think is is the best play for him. I think he probably should have thrown after five. It's a lot easier for us, right, when we're just watching, breaking it down, than um, being the ones on stage, bright lights, huge audience. It's a lot easier to uh, say things like that when we're the ones just kind of watching it happen. So I was debating whether to throw immediately there because I figured I knew he had the move, so... I could have thrown immediately to pressure him, but I, I went for the sneak, and I got it, which is good. I go up to a 100 energy here, so I've got double Hydro Cannon. He knows that. He knows he can't really shield, so he's going to be forced to take a shield advantage here. Hydro Cannon knocks out the Dunsparce. And what is going to come in? I've got all this energy. I build up quite a bit. He shields, potentially worried about the Earthquake. And check this out. I'm patient, and I actually reach the Earthquake after the bait in a bit of a miscue from Crimson. He knows it as soon as it happens. Like, no reason for him to throw. Um, no reason for him to throw the Ice Punch there. So just a little bit of a miscue. And uh, he was really nervous before the match. I'm, I was nervous as well, but you could tell he, he was nervous. Um, and at this point of the game, we're in a pretty confident situation. Um, I decide to just shield the weather ball here to uh, make sure I get off this blast burn. I probably could tank this, but like, <laughs> I probably didn't need to shield there. But when you're in the moment, like sometimes you just kind of second guess yourself. Blast Burn coming through. Going to grab the shield. Then I'm just going to switch into Lickitung here because Ninetales is almost in body slam range. Licky's bulky enough. Should be able to uh, to close out here. The Medicham also doesn't have much energy. Dazzling Gleam. Ow. That does a lot. 
but not quite enough to the bulky Lickmeister. Licky, 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 can't you see? And uh, we're going to lick down. Medicham is still lurking around, but doesn't have any energy. So uh, we take game number one. Pretty favorable alignment for me in that game number one. Swamper into Dunspar is probably one of the better leads I could have asked for. And here we go. Game number two. I lead Swampert into Ninetales. I actually run the same line here in game number two. I'm I'm someone that doesn't typically run the same line two games in a row. I like to mix it up, keep my opponent guessing. But I felt like this line of three was pretty strong because Swampert, except for like Whimsicott, <laughs> can, uh, can really have play against everything. And um, Charizard, as per usual... Um, unless it's against like the Dunsparce is going to be really good up a shield. So I did want to try and lure out the Dunsparce with my Lickitung. Because Lickitung can really soft lose that matchup. It's not super dominant for Dunsparce. Even though you're taking double resisted Lick damage. And you're dealing out neutral damage. Like roll out, drill run, non-stab isn't that great of a move set In terms of like efficiency. So yeah I... I uh, shield a Weather Ball. He shielded a Hydro Cannon. I just decided to go straight into Licky here. Um, Crimson stays in. And he probably understands that I'm trying to lure out the Dunsparce. So he's staying in. I throw the Body Slam. He lets it go. This is going to create a bit of a desync in the Switch Timer. Which you're going to see is going to benefit me later on. He goes up to double Weather Ball, throws the Weather Ball for some chip damage, and then goes Dunsparce. This is going to kind of help him secure the secondary matchup. If you just instantly swap Dunsparce into Licky, I think Licky can actually win um, the Zero Shield scenario. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's the case. I think that was certainly the case before the rollout buff. Um, I don't know if it's still the case. Bit of risky timing by me, because I think I threw that on alignment, so it's a little bit lucky on my part. Drill run coming through, and because of the desync switch timer, you're going to see my switch clock is up here, so rather than just allow this Dunsparce to farm, I'm just going to be dynamic here. Go straight into my Swamper. Um, he is going to throw the drill run here. I think he's three rollouts away, so I'm able to actually throw on good timing here. I was really happy with my counting this tournament. I felt like my counting was on point almost every single match. Um, Hydro Cannon coming through. He's going to be forced to let it go. Ninetales has a Weather Ball. So he's going to throw the Weather Ball right away. And at this point... Um, the hardest check to Charizard is gone, so I'm just going to come in with Charizard and hope for the best. He comes in with his Charizard, and once again, he's a turn behind, so I have to throw this Dragon Claw right away. I'm sure most of you guys know this, but some of you may not. Have to throw this Dragon Claw right away. If I don't throw this right away, I'm doing myself a huge disservice. Um... And Crimson here knows that since he's a turn, a wing attack behind, he's in a bad spot. And check this out. I was actually <laughs> I was actually so confident that my uh that my Charizard would um would win CMP. I actually did one extra wing attack. <laughs> because that's how confident I am that my Charizard's going to always win CMP. Which you'll see play a factor later on in this tournament as well. And I'm able to actually CMP tie here on the claw. And that is a good game against Crimson K19. Definitely an obscure team from him. Made me nervous because, like, if I get Swampert locked on Whimsicott, that's bad news. Whimsicott kind of core breaks my team, right? Because Charm Whimsicott beats Swampert, beats Medicham, beats Altaria. So it, the Whimsicott definitely scared me a little bit, but he actually didn't brought it. I guess he didn't feel like it was worth it. Because it does not want to see the Charizard, that's for sure. <laughs> if Whimsicott gets locked on Charizard, that's uh, that's bad news. 
We take down Crimson, which puts us into the top eight. And it was then I was going to have to face my teammate, Mr. House Stark. Both of us play for Stadium Elite. Stark won the Baltimore Regional Championship, the first tournament of this play Pokemon season, and had not competed since. Um, I competed in Orlando, Arlington, and Knoxville. So this was uh, one of multiple tournaments for me this year. And I wanted this tournament as kind of a warm-up before Worlds, which is in about a month. Coming up super fast in Yokohama. Dude, I leave in like 25 days for Japan. Crazy. But here we go. And Stark's team is very weak to Zard. It's very weak to Zard. Game one, Stark catches me with a sucker punch. I shouldn't say sucker. That's not probably the term I'm looking for. But... I didn't think he was going to bring Swampert, which maybe is just dumb by me. But I felt like with Altaria, Medi, Licky, Charizard, my own, I felt like Swampert like, wasn't that good against my team. So I didn't expect it. And I ran a line that kind of disrespected Swampert lead. So I'm in a tough spot here right off the bat. Um, I did expect a lot of Frost knocked out, which should to me which should probably indicate right like if he runs frost knockdown i run reggie he needs a reggie counter so swamper does actually make sense so just the, i think a poor and a risky team composition by me which puts me behind right out of the gate stark wisely throws hydro before i can get to a move and then goes in with the bulky knockdown I throw Blast Burn right before Sky Attack. Start thinking about whether he wants the shield or not. And he does pull up the shield. Sky Attack coming through now. And he's going to pull my second shield pretty quickly here. Now, in my head, I'm thinking, okay, maybe I can get shields down here. So Stark is going to be willing to use his shield to get rid of my Charizard. And I'm thinking, okay, if I can get shields down, well, then I can probably get rid of the Swampert. Because I can Focus Blast it. And Swampert's in Focus Blast range after taking those wing attacks from Charizard. So I know I'm going to have to take a Shadow Ball here. I'm okay with that. Um, and I'm going to over farm here to a hundred energy. I could have like slightly undercharged this, but I don't think I do. And here you're going to see me make a slight misplay. I was very concerned about like the catch on the frost last. And because of my concern, I didn't throw instantly. And if I had thrown instantly, I think I would have gotten off the Focus Blast before he got off the Hydro. Let's take a quick replay. So I over farmed to 100. I did Focus Blast, which is 75 energy. So I have 25 energy. I'm 10 lock-ons away. So if he did more than five Mud Shots, I would have gotten this off first. Let's see what happens here. One, two, three four five okay so it actually would have been a charge move priority so that makes me feel a little bit better i would have lost charge move priority there um so not a huge misplay check out this this is kind of nasty this is kind of nasty i undercharged the focus blast to barely not ko the swampert and to give myself a one mud shot head start but uh unfortunately Hydro Cannon isn't quite enough here, so I have to commit to the Earthquake. And Stark's able to reach a Shadow Ball before the Earthquake, which will be enough here to knock out my Swampert. And I was joking with Twitch chat. It's one of those situations you, like, know it's going to KO. <laughs> like, you know the Shadow Ball is going to KO. You're just, like, hoping it doesn't KO. Um, and uh, I was joking with him there. <laughs> like, and keep in mind, Stark and I were, staying, were staying at the same Airbnb with our teammates. We've definitely, uh, I would say we've become friends over the past year or so. And um, 
I was like, hey, how about that undercharge? Because <laughs> even though I lost, I was like, I was pretty proud of that undercharge. That was kind of nasty, in my opinion. So I'm down 1-0, and I'm like, damn. Um, that was not a good team comp from me. And with your back against the wall, sometimes you kind of resort to, like, what's safest. And I felt like Charizard is definitely my safest lead against his team. And here we see the Swamper. And you might be thinking, oh, no, another bad lead. I will be the first to say I consider this a good lead for me. If this is, like, in the back, Swampert's ahead energy, you're down a shield, like, bad. But lead scenario, Charizard versus Swampert, shadow on shadow, I should say. I should clarify. This is a good lead for Charizard. Because I'm going to always win the two shield scenario and come out super healthy. I build up to Blast Burn and go for the Claw Bay. Keep in mind, this would KO if this is a Blast Burn. This would knock out. In my head, Stark has to shield. Like, he has to. If he doesn't shield a Blast Burn, he just loses on the spot. But from Stark's perspective, it's the same thing, right? Like, it's, it's a Claw. Because, like, he knows I have to shield. Like... He's not going to go for the Blast Bird here with two shields up. So from Stark's perspective, it's kind of the... I know that you know that I know. And he calls the bait. And that's a pretty nasty call. And then you're going to see a very questionable decision by me here. To not instantly throw my Dragon Claw. But instead, I go for the farm down. And I think this is a mistake. I think this is a mistake. I would much rather have... Yeah, I would much rather have uh, not been down two shields, but only been down one shield in this scenario. I do have all this energy, so I am going to get shields back. Um, I go for the Dragon Claw bait here. Stark knows it's probably a bait, but he's like, come on, and it is a bait. Um, and then I have the Blast Burn already, and Stark smart decision from him here he knows it's a blast burn he told me after he knows it's a blast burn but he's better off saving shields for frost anyway and you know if i had maybe like caught here on registeel maybe that could have been really beneficial for me to preserve some health on that charizard but i know there's a potential for frostlass in the back frostlass is pretty strong against my team it doesn't really have a hard hard check it has soft checks for sure, but really no hard check to Frostlass. I don't consider Registeel a hard check to Frostlass by any means, as you're going to see here. Shadow Ball coming through. Going to dish out some significant damage to Reginald Steel. I really need the Zap Cannon debuff because I need to live the next Shadow Ball. If you read my lips, I say 66%. Come on. Stark's laughing. Come on, Zap Cannon. No debuff. Have we gotten any Zap Cannon debuffs this entire tournament? I don't think so. Niantic changed the rate, and they didn't tell any of us. Come on, Reggie. Live the Shadow Ball. Please. No, not quite. And uh, then I say GG's, because it's all Terry in the back. So, Stark just outplayed me completely in this matchup. I had a few questionable decisions i think that i could have executed a lot better and like that house stark 93 gonna send me to the losers bracket and that would set me up in a situation where i had to win two more matches now to make day three and stark just clinched day three so he's in the winners finals against wadaj i now get sent to the losers bracket and have to win two matches to put myself through to day three. Let's see. Skipping ahead, I see me. And next up, I am taking on Lyle Jeffs. Lyle Jeffs from Canada. Running a Shadow Venusaur. Hadn't played one all tournament. There's your boy. Writing things down. One of my favorite moments was... Inadequance was, uh, I think he was reacting to my Knoxville run, and he he would keep seeing me write stuff down, and he'd be like, what the heck is Rise writing down? Like, he's like, step one, RPS. <laughs> you know? But I typically just write down my team, I write down their team just to help visualize it, and then I make any notes, like Charizard's really good, Venusaur is scary, it probably comes, stuff like that. So here we go. 
Losers round four. This is like the top eight still. Top six, maybe. If you win, whoever wins this is into top four, I believe. And here we go. Charizard mirror match game number one. And I decide to throw right away. Knowing my Charizard is likely going to win CMP. What are your IVs on your Charizard, Rise? I ain't telling you. Jermaine. He goes for his claw. I'm going to shield as well. I feel like switch could be important here. I've got Licky Medi in the back. I go for the claw. It's a CMP. Is he going to let this go? He is. Claw knocks out. He goes Lantern. I'm going to pivot. I'm not going to give him that huge spark down. And I lure out the Medi. And you see me do a little nod of the head. Because already I feel like I'm in a really good spot. I know Licky can win the zeros here. Or soft lose. If he's willing to commit a shield. But I know I've got my Medi. And I've got a little bit health on Charizard. Um, he's going to go for the Psychic. I'm perfectly fine no shielding. I know it's probably a Psychic. But I know I live and get to my Body Slam. And if I just save a shield for Medi, I feel like I'm in a pretty decent spot. Body slam coming through. Lyle's going to elect to let it go and check out what actually happens here. This is actually pretty huge for me. Um, it, Oh, it looked like Lyle actually stopped tapping there. He actually stopped tapping to try and give himself more farm. But in doing so, he allows me to get to a body slam. So, I don't know. I don't know if that was the right play by Lyle. Now, some people in chat thought this was really dumb by me, but I thought it was the right play. I come in with Charizard here because I've got a little bit of energy. I can get to a claw or I can just force him to uh, throw energy. So he's not going to throw energy. So I get off my claw. If he lets it go, I probably just counter down and he shields. So then I swap Medi and now I've got a Medi up. Up health, up a shield against this fully loaded Lantern. And I just shield the first. And in a pretty convincing position here. Lantern would need at least double Thunderbolt. And even that probably wouldn't be enough without some more fast move damage. As you see, Thunderbolt doesn't quite put me into the yellow. The next Spark did. And Psychic should be enough to knock out from this range. And we're able to take game number one against Lyle Jeffs. Things are starting to get spicy. A little bit tense. I felt like his game one line was awfully soft to Altaria, and he may have read that. Because I lead Altaria into A9 game number two for a pretty horrendous lead. But if you're thinking this game is over, keep on watching. Because we swap Licky. Licky is pretty safe against his team. The only hard-ish check is, is G-Fisk. And that's not even a hard check. That's more of a soft check. He stays in. And in his head, I think Lyle may have been like flip-flopping. He's like, okay, I've got G-Fisk for the Altaria anyway. Um... So maybe I just stay in, but then he was maybe questioning if, if he could secure that matchup. So he chips, then goes g to make sure he secures uh, switch advantage. But at this point in time, our switch clocks are heavily desynced. So I'm going to go for the power whip here. Just try and chip this, uh, just try and chip this g as much as possible. He's going to go for the rock slide here. This should be maybe just barely enough to knock out my Lickitung. It'll be close. Rock Slide does KO. I come in right away with Swampert while he is still switch locked. And uh, Lyle is going to go for the Rock Slide bait here. I remember thinking, okay, he's at 9. I'm going to shield. He baits me. Nice bait. I have to throw after 4 here to not allow him to freely get off an Earthquake. Now Lyle's posed with the decision. Does he shield to get this off? He lets it go. Wants to save 2 shields for Charm 9. And now I'm like, oh, is there any way my Swampert gets to three Hydro Cannons? 
I throw after one. I'm going to force a shield here. I'm going to throw after four. And now I'm four mud shots away. So there's a slight chance I could get to a third Hydra. It comes down to the new mechanic, which Sof just referred to on her stream last night. Like, is it still new? It's been a thing for like two years. <laughs> Maybe not two years, maybe like a year. But this is very awkward. I have to shield the Weather Ball, of course. Double super effective. Is there any way I can Dragon Breath down? Lyle, I still think this is the right play by him to stay in for the charm damage. Um, rather than swap out. But it does give me an energy lead. And I over farm here. And I throw Moonblast right before the Thunderbolt. Probably could have thrown it earlier in case of a debuff. Maybe the Sparks would have done slightly less. Moonblast coming through. Does some nice damage to Lantern. Altaria. Can you hang on? Can you live the Thunderbolt? Okay. Is there any way I can get to the Sky Attack? It's going to be close. I get there one turn before the Surf. Is this going to be enough to knock out Altaria on a sliver of HP? Sky attack. Boom. Knocks out. And that is probably one of the bigger reactions you'll see from me. I'm pretty stoic, but I was like, yo. I can't believe I won that game. And here's the thing. Props to Lyle. Like, it's so hard when you're on stage or in the moment. The pressure's on. If Lyle... If we, like, replayed that game with the same lineup ten times, Lyle might win the next nine. But, um, one game, you don't know what the back line is, per se. Let's see what, uh, Speedy and Butters say here. We'll have to face off against Enhoff for that travel war. Like you said, though, another... Because I think they... I... I did watch this once, and I think they thought I was still so dead to rights here. No, you actually are going to be able to get the Dragon Breath down, but now you've just taken so much damage. You're at about 60% health. You are up energy. Can you, Caleb, can you get the double Moonblast? Can I, you I, hold on from a Thunderbolt? You might be able to double Moonblast. I, I mean, you need a debuff for sure. I'm actually surprised Ride didn't throw this earlier because you need a debuff sooner. Even the Spark damage is starting to add up. But I think uh, this Thunderbolt and the Spark damage is going to be a little too overwhelming for Ryze's Altaria. It's really close because this will not knock out, but the Sparks probably will. It's going to be close, though, or you might just get to a Surf. You're just going to get to a Surf first, but here comes the Sky Attack. Oh. Throwing the Sky Attack on Charge Attack Priority. This is resisted, but this Lantern is really low health. Can it hold on for Lyle's Jeff's dreams? Oh, no! no it's, it's a knockout! Rise occasion coming out of nowhere. That was pretty cool. Audrey had nowhere <laughs> to go. Able to still get the win against that Lantern in the back against Lyle Jeff's. Wow, what an incredible endgame. I think we all thought it was over, right? No we're, way! Yeah. We're, we're like, okay, this is it. But Rise occasion proving why he's one of the best trainers in the world. 2-0 there in a very quick set. And so now Lyle Jeffs will have to face off against Enhoff for that. So at this point in the tournament, um, for the North American International Championships, the top two players get a spot in Worlds plus a travel award. Uh, third and fourth place also get a spot in Worlds, but no travel award. However, House Stark and Wadaj have already clinched top three. I have clinched top four. We all already had a spot in Worlds and a travel award. Wadaj being the Hartford Regional Champion, Stark being the Baltimore Regional Champion, myself being the Knoxville Regional Champion. So there were a lot of cascades to the next several spots, which actually allowed Lyle Jeffs right there to get a spot in Worlds. Enhoff actually got a spot in Worlds plus a travel award. Um, Jay Mills got a cascade spot in Worlds and also um, Teddy Bear got a cascade spot in Worlds. And my next opponent, Mountain Dugong, with that said, already now is going to adapt to the trainer. I'm was able to clinch a travel award plus a spot in worlds for top four because no matter what was to happen um stark and wadaj being top three there was death and me myself also being top four no matter what happened from this point on a travel award would cascade all the way to uh, mountain dugong so he had already clinched travel award 
which is pretty cool. And Mount Dugong has been a really nice supporter of the channel. Um, I met him in Knoxville for the first time. Really kind dude. And uh, I lead Swampert into Venusaur, game number one. Yikes. I, and this is similar to the Stark match. This is similar to the Stark match. I did not think he was going to be bringing Venusaur much <laughs> against Charizard, Altaria. Uh, but to be fair, it has play against the other four. So, to be fair. Venusaur does look still kind of solid against my team. I safe swap Reggie. I lure out Medi. Don't hate this situation. Don't hate this situation because I know I can win the zero shield, of course. Um, so I'm going to get a shield advantage most likely here so he can keep his Venusaur onto the Swampert. Oh man, no debuff once again. No debuff. Has Rise ever gotten a debuff in this tournament? Not yet. <laughs> Psychic coming through. Reggie going to hang on. I go for the next Zap Cannon. Here we gotta get the debuff, right? It can't be like nine no debuffs in a row. There we go. We get the debuff. But this is tough because this is an uncomfortable amount of health. And it's like, I could try and counter down with Medi maybe. But if I counter down with Medi, like how the heck am I gonna take out? Like, I have no energy on Swampert then. It's just tough, man. So I like... We're not really sure the best course of action here. I decide to uh, shield the first Psychic. Probably should have thrown Hydro there, maybe, to give myself a chance. Hmm, yeah, I wonder if I threw Hydro there, if that put me in a better spot. I decided to bank double Hydro, and there's the Noctow, and uh, this is a pretty desperate situation. Like, I am ahead a little bit on Medi. The problem is... Uh, how the heck do I get rid of that Venusaur, you know? And Mountain Dugong just plays this whole game very cleanly. Doesn't do too much. Just goes for the Sky Attack here. I don't, like, really know if I should shield or not. I think I could have done one more counter here. Oh, yeah, I do do one more counter. So I see him PM, and he's thinking, like... This is smart by Mountain Dugong, actually. This is really smart, because... If he shields, he runs the risk of me over farming and landing an earthquake onto the Venusaur. So, excuse me, despite this being a pretty hard counter alignment for Mountain Dugong, um, he still played this flawlessly to not allow me any nooks or crannies to sneak away with a win. And the game is over here, but I just decide to throw the earthquake. Like, why not? Hail Mary. <laughs> And a very convincing game one win for Mount Dugong. So once again, we fall down zero to one. Um, is that the second time or the third time we've fallen down zero to one? We fell down zero to one against Kevin. I feel like it might have happened another time. Maybe not. So we're going to try and make an adjustment here. Swampert Lee did not fare very well. Long and I thinking things over. And it was funny when he came out on stage and we were opponents because it's like, who would have thought? Like, uh, he's been pretty active in my stream as a chatter. Um, he's improved so rapidly because I think he only started Sylph this season. I'm not sure how many seasons he's been doing GBL, but uh, he's just improved so rapidly, man. Really talented player. Game number two, I lead Lickitung into Dugong. And this uh, shiny Dugong in all its glory. Mountain Dugong using shiny Dugong. He's going to throw Icy Wind. I'm going to make sure I at least build up to the power up to threaten it. He swaps Medi. And I have a Charizard this time to really punish the Medi swap. I know this is an Ice Punch, of course, but I'm still going to shield because... If he was willing to swap Medi, I felt like he might be trying to lure it lure it out um, to protect something else. Like the Venusaur, perhaps. So, I build up to the Blast Burn. I go for Blast Burn to ensure the knockout. 
And here, I was very surprised he didn't come in with the Lantern, but I asked him about this afterwards, not even in the immediate afterwards, but like um, when I did my recap stream, and he said he knew it was Reggie in the back, so like he knew his Dugong was kind of not as valuable. He, he felt like he just had to sweep with Lantern at this point. Um, I was debating i was seeing if i get to blast burn i do get to a claw here which is pretty big and he lets it go but that chip damage is really useful for me and even though he's up a shield with his water gun lantern i feel like i'm in a pretty confident situation because i can just come in with reggie i can absorb all this i can hopefully get off two moves with reggie or debuff the lantern and uh, then lick a tongue still quite healthy should be able to close out Surf's up, dude. Surf chips us a bit. Mount Dugong kind of has to shield at this point. And Zap Cannon is going to finally get a debuff. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> um, probably should have just thrown my Focus Blast there when I had it. Because I end up having to expend a shield here. But honestly, I think... I knew it didn't really matter. Because it was a charge move priority, I am willing to expend the shield this time to get off this zap cannon. This will force the final shield from Mountain Dugong. And um, I think he said GG's there. Because Lickitung has a power whip banked as well. Power whip probably doesn't quite KO, but almost KOs from this range. And uh, the Pew Pews will not be enough. So this sets us up for a game three. And a little bit of confusion ensues in this game three. And rather than, I don't know, rather than Like, just watching the whole thing play out. I will pause it just to, like, show you guys what happens. So, I lead Charizard into Metacham. Probably the best possible lead for me. Um, and he stays in, which catches me by surprise. And I have the Registeel in the back on paper. This is a pretty, pretty dominant alignment for me. Once again, I'm only to shield the Ice Punch just to preserve health on my Charizard. He's going to stay in, try and chip this as much as he can. I play it kind of the same way I did before. I go up to the Blast Burn. Or one shy of double Blast Burn, I should say. Knock out the Metacham. In comes Noctowl. And right here, you're going to notice my Charizard starts getting kind of slow. After I knock out the Metacham, my fast moves started taking one turn longer than they are intended to. Charizard runs Wing Attack, which is a two-turn fast move. My Charizard's Wing Attack start taking three turns here. The same as, like, Snarl would be, or Ice Shard. My Charizard starts getting three-turn Wing Attacks. Which is really concerning, <laughs> because this is a high-stakes game and situation, and I feel like I'm in a good spot. Charizard actually gets off the next blast burn but like it i should have gotten several more wing attacks at this point if i'm being honest but i do force both shields and right the metacham is already out of the picture i feel like it's very possible there's a dugong in back i don't know for certain but i feel like it's very possible there's a dugong in back and with metacham out of the picture reggie has played against everything anyway so i feel like the safest play for me here is to come in with altaria in case it is the dugong so I come in with Altaria, I make the correct read, he comes in Dugong, I swap, and the game should be over. But look at how my Reggie is generating energy. My lock-ons are two-turn lock-ons, and you see me explaining to Speedy the Judge I'm missing fast moves, I'm missing fast moves. Theoretically, I actually wasn't missing fast moves, my lock-ons just became two-turn lock-ons. And this is really bad, <laughs> because of, I was... 
some people that were watching in the back were saying like, yeah, we actually stopped watching and like getting ready for the next match because we, we thought it was over. But my Reggie is lagging so much with two turn lock-ons that Dugong is actually going to be able to get to three drill runs before I get to two focus blasts or two zap cannons. And if you're curious about the turns, it is 15, 12, 15 for drill run. So that would be 15, 27, 42 turns for Registeel. Let's just say I'd go for two zap cannons. It'd be 16 and 16. So that'd be 32. So it'd be a 10 turn or five second difference. Now, in the Twitch chat, the, the life of Rise, guys, the life of being Rise and a Twitch streamer in this game, they were saying, oh, Rise swapped late. Rise threw on alignment. Rise swapped late. He threw on alignment. Look, he swaps. I swap. Oh, Rise swapped late. That's why the Dugong outpaced. He swapped late, guys. <laughs> guys, come on. Jeez Louise. Um, I think most people that were watching closely and like understand the game knew that this was a pretty severe lag. But a lot of people were were kind of making fun of me for disputing. Um, so yeah, because the Dugong takes out the Reggie, my Altari never gets to the Moonblast, and you see me kind of disgruntled and frustrated because I felt like I had that game in the bag. And I I start talking to Dugong. I, I, I was telling the judge Need for Speedy that I was disputing, um... And I was really surprised that Caleb and Butters like never never noticed the lag because there was never like a falter here. And I just want to say, as someone that commentates YouTube videos and, and battles all the time, it happens to me all the time as well. Where like you get so focused on like being energetic and um and being entertaining and commentating the action that like you might not notice something that happened. Like it's happened to me probably have lost count of how many times where like something crazy happens like rise you didn't even notice that the pelipper threw hydro pump rise you didn't even notice that the the zekrom like lived with one hp to get off the wild like um so but i was just surprised that like that they never noticed that my registeel and my charizard <laughs> were both super duper slow so i talk with dugong for a while here and basically to explain what happened, because a lot of people were confused since the since the broadcast never really got the correct communication of what was going on, was it was never a question of am I disputing or not, or if there's a rematch or not. It was a rematch ruled like pretty much instantly. And Dugong, being a tremendous um, sport and a tremendous human being, like starts to think about it and consider like, yeah, there's no way my Dugong outpaces the Registeel there. And and then I'm like, yeah, and I feel like the way it should play out is I knock out the Dugong, Noctowl is forced to expend a Shadow Ball um, to knock out Registeel, and then Altaria would simply outpace to a Moonblast before Noctowl would get off, like, double or triple move. So after a while... As I skip through, um, Dugong does elect to concede the match. And I wanted, I made sure to tell him like, hey man, like, I know, sorry, I got it like a little bit disgruntled and emotional there, but like, I just want to let you know, like, if you want a rematch, you are totally entitled to, and I will hold nothing against you if you do, because it's within your right to rematch that game. Um, and he thought about it and I gave him a hug and. He was like, no, I'm sure. I, I want to concede. And I, I started crying when I went backstage because it was just such a roller coaster of emotions. I started crying because, like, I... It, it was just such a roller coaster from, like, I had the game. I, I was confident I was going to day three to I lag out. Maybe I have to rematch from scratch to Dugong with an incredibly kind and sportsman-like gesture concedes the game so like it's just a roller coaster i started crying i had to like compose myself and that sets us up for day number three this is a long video ladies and gents i'm trying to go through it as fast as possible 
Day three, a rematch against House Stark, who sent me to the losers bracket. Wadaj was able to beat House Stark. Um, Baltimore regional champion. Stark and I drove together in the morning and uh, we're joking around. We had a fun night the night before. All three of us in the top three had previously qualified, had previously gotten travel awards. So I don't think any of us were like super stressed. I think all of us were relatively just looking to have fun, give it our best showing. And I did have the advantage of, well, not just the team advantage, but I had the advantage of watching Wadaj play Stark the match before with his Shadow Charizard. And it helped give me some ideas of how to approach this matchup. So game number one, I lead my Swampert. And I met by his Swamper. A little bit of visual lag there. Um, and, uh, and I actually decide to let the Hydro Cannon go on the CMP. Because I feel like shields are more valuable for my Charizard in the back. So he shields up his Hydro. And I just aggressively swap into Charizard. And he's down a shield now. And this is going to put him in a very uncomfortable predicament where uh, I shield the Hydro Cannon. He goes into Noctow. I throw on what would have been Charge Move Priority. He doesn't throw right away. So he's at seven wing attacks. Blast Burn coming through. He lets it go. And... At this point, I know I can just shield and wing attack down. I could have even thrown my Dragon Claw there. That was another option, but I go for the shield and wing attack down. I've got lots of energy. He only has one shield to hide behind. And which Pokemon is he going to come in with? He comes in with the Swampert. He has the... Hydro Cannon loaded, but he knows I have double, so he elects to let it go. And now it's Frostlass against the world. And, um, oh man, I think he lagged a turn there. Did he miss a Potter Snow? I didn't even notice that in the moment. So that's unfortunate because Stark may have been able to, uh, Yeah, so Stark, let's just take a quick look at that. Did he lag a turn there? One, two, three. I think he lagged a turn there, but I don't think it changed the outcome because the way it would have played out is let's say Zard never gets off this Blast Burn. Um, I still have my Registeel, and I think that was enough Wing Attack damage plus Sap Cannon. Or I should still be okay, especially if I got a debuff and there's no way, but that sucks. Because that could have been a lot closer if Stark didn't lag a turn there. Game 2. Swampert into Noctowl. Once again, I'm perfectly comfortable... Um, Playing the Zero Shield. Similarly to when I played against... Was it Conky? I was Swampert against Noctow. I was perfectly comfortable playing the Zero Shield. And I didn't do a whole lot of prep for Day 3. Um, because, like, we all know the game well. It's really going to come down, in my opinion, to how we execute during the battles. Rather than, like, looking at... Like, doing scrims and stuff. So, I knew that if I threw this right away, a rank 1 Noctowl actually lives with 1 HP and I could swap. So I actually, I actually knew that that was how it was supposed to play out there. And Charizard, I had a wing attack, man. Like, look at, look at Stark's team. What's his best answer for Charizard? He doesn't really have one. And I actually go for the Blast Burn here. Stark with a little smirk because he called the claw before. <laughs> I think he was surprised I actually went for it that time. Um, gonna shield up here, but because of that one wing attack head start, I felt like I was safe going for the blast burn. Stark with a subtle misplay here, probably should have just thrown that hydro cannon right away. Allows me to charge move priority here. 
and then has to shield. Um, I'm going to shield as well, man. Just kind of abusing Charizard. Just kind of abusing Charizard. And I knew this was very possible that he might catch onto his Frostlass. But I was okay with that because I can simply store a move here and then come in with Licky. And I know my Charizard will win CMP against the Swampert. So this is a pretty convincing position here. Licky's bulky enough to be able to take two Avalanches. Two Avalanches plus a lot of Powder Snows would be enough, but um, these Licks are just kind of chunking. Can survive the Avalanche. Lick down, have a move ready for the Swampert. And should be able to take a 2-0 lead. So, Stark. Um, realizing that game one, game two, I'm kind of just taking shield advantage for, for Charizard. Tries to come up with a way to not allow that to happen. And Stark comes up with a solid strategy for game number three where he leads the Frostlass into my Swamper and this was really smart because I can't really take shield advantage here um, I have to expend shields in this matchup And wait, do I like misplay the heck out of this? Oh yeah, I do. Crap. I go for the Hydro here. This isn't the misplay. This is fine. But I somehow lost count and I don't throw my Hydro here, which is just not acceptable. Like I have to. Um, so I don't know how that happened. Nerves. Um, you see me shaking my head, really upset, upset at myself about that. I do have all this energy, but it's like, how do I best utilize it? And if you look at what he has in the back, and I know it's Swamper. <laughs> I know it's Swamper in the back. I'm just like, oh, man. So he is probably thinking, like, it could be Altaria in the back this time, and maybe that's why he still looks stressed, but his Swamper is just going to clean sweep my back line, man. This ain't good, dude. This ain't good. We both swap. So at least I'm going to get off this claw. That's something. But, uh, this ain't looking good. I can even skip ahead a little bit. Swampert's going to overfarm to two right before I get to my next claw. Perfect overfarm from Stark. Uh, I know it's over. <laughs> I know it's over, but I'm just, like, trying to keep composed. Like, say, like, just play it out, you know? I don't think my switch timer is up yet either, so he's going to get a mud shot down here. And uh... oh, he wasn't sure, so he's a little bit upset at himself there because he could have mud shot down, but it doesn't matter. There's a Registeel in the back. So Stark pulls one game back, and that makes it two to one. Winner of this goes on to play with Dodge in the Grand Finals. And here we go. Game number four, Altaria versus Noctal. I like this matchup as Altaria. Um, because you win the Zero Shield scenario. Start going for the Shadow Ball. Knowing he's going to get off two Shadow Balls or two charge moves, might as well go for the harder hitting Shadow Ball. I go for Sky Attack here. And I'm already thinking, like, okay, if I take another move, there's a decent chance Stark tries to snipe me with a Powder Snow. So I don't think I was thinking about that quite at the start. But right here, I'm thinking he's going to try and snipe me with a Powder Snow. So I'm getting ready to swap my Charizard right here and bank the Sky Attack for later. I swap Charizard. 
and here's the frost last and i actually decided to just throw my claw immediately the reason is because i'm a turn behind i want to eliminate that turn in which i was behind and stark with a slight misstep lets me cmp here and if stark had thrown earlier Maybe I would have been tempted to commit a shield on my Charizard, but at this point, I'm like, I'm perfectly fine just letting Charizard go down now. And I'm just going to try and sweep with Swampert, and this is a good example of the strategy behind my team of the double shadow closers. Charizard wasn't the closer this game. This game, it's going to turn into Swampert. Swampert becomes the closer. And we're going to shield up the Avalanche, of course. It's our last healthy remaining Pokemon. Um, I kind of lost track of where Frost was, so I could have done two extra Mud Shots there, but I throw right away. I still have that Sky Attack banked as well in the back if I can utilize that. What was kind of weird here is I had for I'd lost track of Frost's energy, but I did remember where Noctowl was at, so I'm able to CMP the Noctowl. Stark is forced to shield once again. I do know that the catch is very possible, very likely here. But I was like, as long as I over farm and have more energy than his Swampert, like I should be fine. So I go one past Hydro to guarantee I can outpace the Swampert. He catches it very nicely done. But what I simply do here is I'm going to bank a Hydro Cannon combo with Sky Attack. And my Swampert should be able to win the charge move priority against the Noctowl. So a nice clean little endgame play there to guarantee the win. Um, we both have the move loaded. And Swampert will win the, the charge move priority. Yeah. Oh, man. Great games with Stark. Um, it's always tough, like, as teammate. And then also just, like, I felt like I had such a severe team comp advantage. It's almost like, I don't know. But that's going to set us up for the grand finals, ladies and gents. And I'll uh, Between the let the casters... They did, a, this event. they did a cool little uh, introduction here. Let me move my face cam momentarily. Um, so when Stark, Wadaj, and I clinched top three the night before to make day three, they sent us to this like little studio where they did these like pre-interviews with us, and they cut them up really quickly. Storyline of these unique... At least as we... This is... To vote... Your own I don't know. It's with his own shadow Charizard, I'm telling you. Here we go. My name is Andrew Ford, and I'm from Raleigh, North Carolina. This will connect for that knocked out for so much damage. With Don sets the stage on <laughs> fire. Dude, Gong Don in my recap was like, why did, why did your intro just be a montage of you guys uh, being me? Charizard. I'd say it's working out really well for me. I have a bit of doubts because my team isn't like a standard team. I was just trying to have like fun. And I ended up with like a off meta team and it's working out well. So I think my Charizard on my team is going to help me out a lot. Land the blast burn. Absolutely erase it from the field. In this final match, I'm just going to try, try to have a good time. Like I have the entire tournament. Like there's no stress for me right now. Winning this final would actually like mean a lot. I just won uh, the Harvard Regional and I haven't played since. So I'd be like a back to back champion. And I won uh, the NAIC seniors division last year. So I'd be a two time NAIC champion. And the two times Pokemon Go has been in the circuit. So it'd be like really cool. Tell my opponent to have a good time. It's me. My name's Chris Reisner. I'm from uh, the Milwaukee, Wisconsin area. Really? It's also so awkward. Like, we're in this room with all these cameras and lights on us, and it's just like three guys telling us to do different poses and stuff. <laughs> I just felt, I've never felt, uh, Please, Candid, I don't know, photogenic, so. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't have any 
doubts about my team. I think the team has been functioning really well in terms of its strategy behind it. I think it's just a matter of me executing in the moment and using it properly. You know, I think my shadow Charizard looks strong against my opponents, so they're gonna have to game plan for that. It seems like that's been the theme of this weekend is everybody's team is weak to shadow Charizard. So I think that uh, gives me some edge for them to, to worry about. So I think it's gonna be fun for the fans to watch. Winning NAIC would mean the world because I've competed at many regionals. I've never competed at an international competition and winning an international, it would mean the world. What would I say to my opponents tomorrow? I would say, good luck, have fun. Good luck, have fun. And then they all started saying that. Oh, they do a little cool intro here. Your Pokemon Go Finals! I am too. Anna, she was really nice to met her behind the scenes. to introduce your players. They've just been on stage and they're here to entertain you again. This is probably gonna be my longest YouTube video Pokemon ever. Pokemon competition first. Please welcome Wadaj. Welcome Wadaj. <laughs> now, a notable member of your team is. If I was Foxy 17, Pro. I would probably do the and same thing. Stage, the casters have said the only reason you have given them for choosing Toxic Croak was that it had a hat. Do you have <laughs> anything to add to that? Uh. I has a hat. The, the, the match I brought up there was the only time I've ever used it. So I, it literally only has a hat. So that's that's why I use it. A good enough reason. It's working. You're coming into this match with some great momentum. You've really been on top of this bracket. Do you feel like you're going to be able to keep that momentum? I mean, I'm just trying to have a good time. I never came here to win. If I win, that's great. But like, whatever. I'm second place. I'm happy. Having fun is good too. Thank you so much, Wadaj. Now let's welcome your challenger, Rise to Occasion. Rise, you've been talking about how your Shadow Charizard is notable. Do you think it's going to work well in this match? I think so. I think both of our Charizards have a lot of play, and uh, it'll be a, a battle of the, the Fire Flyers. How are you feeling going into this? You just beat House Stark, who actually knocked you into the loser's bracket. You were able to come back. Do you feel like that's what's going to take you to the, the top? Yeah, Stark's become a good friend, and he's a teammate of mine. And yesterday, he just outplayed the heck out of me, and uh, it gave me a good thing to, to realize what I did wrong, what I could do better. And, um, and yeah, a great run from him. All right, we are so excited to watch you two play. Please go ahead and take your seats. And casters, let's get... You know what's funny is I was saying in my stream recap yesterday is like, I talked to you guys, right? We hit 40,000 subscribers on the channel recently. On a typical Twitch stream, I might get somewhere between like 300, 400 on a, on a good day, over 500 live viewers. And uh, being like on stage in front of like the crowd, like I get all nervous. I don't know why. <laughs> I, it's just a different setting, I guess. Anyway, Grand Finals. Here we go. So, um, I am the loser's finalist. So, I would have... Wadaj has not lost up until this point. Wadaj has also not lost since the Fort Wayne Regional up until this point, considering he swept the Hartford Regional and has won, I think, 15 consecutive matches in the Play Pokemon circuit. Because I lost to Stark and had to claw my way back to the Grand Finals, I have to beat Wadaj in two consecutive best of fives to win the tournament. If I win the first best of five, it resets the bracket. And here we go. Wadaj and I locked in extremely quickly for a lot of these matches. And here's game number one. Oh, let's move my face back to the middle. I get a solid lead Altaria into Umbreon. Umbreon soft loses this matchup. I believe Umbreon shields Moonblast. It can actually flip this matchup. So this is not like a super dominant matchup, I would say. Um, but this is a soft win for Altaria. <clears throat> I am going to throw my Moonblast eventually. Little Whittle Umbreon. Going to eat it to the face. Wadaj knows that Charizard's shield advantage is so 
big in this matchup that he doesn't really want to shield his Umbreon in the lead. He's probably expecting, like, to soft lose and then maybe wing attack down. And I sense that that's a possibility. So instead of allowing, like, him to swap here and wing attack me down and get a head start, I decide to save my sky attack kind of like I did against Stark and swap in my own Charizard. Gonna shield up the foul play here. Unfortunately, this would still hurt Charizard, so I want to preserve some health. Um, he goes into Quag. Also saves his Umbreon as a potential sack swap. I go directly for the Blast Burn because I think there's a chance he doesn't shield. Two shields still in play. And I land the Blast Burn. That's pretty big because now... Oh, and I actually throw my back-to-back -back here. This is something I kind of wish I did against Stark. I throw the back to back to force him to shield, and I do get the shield. Now, I know he can't get to Mud Bomb plus Stone Edge, so I feel like it's a safe shield, but he wisely does bait me, and this is actually going to allow him to get to another Mud Bomb, um, which is resisted, but it doesn't really look like it when you see how much damage this does. Mud Bomb coming through from Shadow Quag. Ow! I get the wing attack down. I know he has the Umbreon as a catch opportunity. So I just have to be cognizant of that. He does one, two, goes for the catch. I waited. See that wait? See that wait? Sorry. <laughs> one tap, two tap. I wait right on the catch. So that was nice little patience. Um... Really dumb play by me here to go for the claw. This was probably a potential lose condition. But uh, I'm able to combo with the sky attack. This will do a lot of damage. He's going to wing attack me down here. And um, this is, a, I take a deep breath because I'm like, <laughs> come on, Medi. You can close this out. You can live the blast burn. Still a little bit scary here. And you see the reaction from Wadaj, like, oh, that's okay, but it's probably too bulky. Last burn does a ton. And Medi's counter is just barely able to outpace Charizard's wing attacks as we take game number one of the grand finals. Got a little bit trigger happy there. Game number two. Charizard into Dugong. I go for the Dragon Claw bait here. It's just so hard to not shield a potential Blast Burn from Shadow Charizard. So I get the bait. I'm going to put up a Protect Shield here. Just focusing on throwing good timing. Also want to throw before he debuffs me again. I go for the blast burn here. Figure I'm debuffed. He might be a little less likely to shield. He does shield. So a good shield from Wadaj. Um, he throws his icy wind on good timing. I'm going to put up a shield myself. I feel like switch advantage could be important here. Um, and as you see from the back line, switch advantage is important because if Lickitung gets matched up with Umbreon, that's not good for me. I go for the Blast Burn. Boom. I take Switch. He's going to get a little bit of a energy head start. I come in with Lickitung. Because once Dugong is out of the picture, if you look at Wadaj's team, once Dugong's out of the picture, I feel like Altaria has play against everything else. So I just come in with Lickitung here. Blast burn. Ow, that hurts. Save the body slam. Go in Altaria. Now, what the casters say here, which I was also thinking, is this is a little scary for me because if I win this matchup and he wing attacks me down and comes out with a Dragon Claw, I lose. So I have to be cognizant of that. I do have a Body Slam loaded though, so that's good for me. Moonblast. 
coming through, does some big time damage. Umbreon just so dang bulky, man. So dang bulky. Hits me with a foul. <laughs> Almost said foully P. Like K God. Hits me with another foul play. Now I know the switch timer is coming up soon. And I don't want to take this out because I don't want to give him a free farm down. So I'm patient. I'm looking at the top right. And I had to react within a half second. What <laughs> Dodge says. A naughty word. Come on, Wadash. Just kidding. Stakes are high. And I get the lick down. And uh, have the body slam loaded for a crazy game two. Like, game of inches. Because it takes one turn or the equivalent of a half second to swap. And um, I had to throw my sky attack there within about a half second of reacting to the swap. Otherwise, my Altaria would have fainted and lost that sky attack. So... I thought that was a pretty nice highlight there, a nice reaction time. If I'm tooting my own horn, sorry. There's probably someone in the, in the comments here on YouTube like, Rise, are you only posting your second place NAIC run to... Spoiler alert, second place. Are you only posting it to so you can brag, just praise your own place? Guys, like, I'm trying to be analytical. I'm trying to, like, break down things. And yes, I am proud. I, I, I made a nice run. Okay. Lick a tongue into Charizard. Neutral lead, but I would say this is slightly favorable for Lickitung, just because, like, my body slam um, is pretty threatening. Where, like, I can live a blast burn in the zero shield, but he can't really live a body slam plus licks. And once again, I just know how valuable shield advantage is for my Charizard. So I'm going to let the blast burn go here. And he's just going to throw back to back. And I'm okay with losing Switch here because I don't have Altaria in the back. I don't have Altaria in the back, so Switch isn't as important. I decide... Well, I kind of have to come in with Zard. Kind of some weird visual there. I don't think I lagged a turn. I think he actually lagged a turn. Which doesn't really impact things since he threw first. Um, now the Dugong likely is going to come in. I'm going to throw the Blast Burn here. He's two Ice Shards away. You see how critical timing is me throwing after four? Because he's going to shield. And I'm able to... Get off my Blast Burn here on charge move priority, which is pretty big for me. But then I'm forced with a decision. Do I have Medi up a shield against whatever's in back? And just let Charizard go? Or do I preserve the Charizard? I'm like, what if it is Cresselia? I shield the Icy Wind, preserving my Charizard. I'm debuffed here. I figure I'm better off saving the Blast Burn going Medi. Don't know if that was the right play or if just getting the Blast Burn off while I had it was better. I'm not sure. Moonblast going to do a lot of damage. Ow. I just need to get this thing into Blast Burn range, though. Ice Punch coming through. This should put it around Blast Burn range now. Um... And you're going to see me wince a little in a moment here because I think I kind of screw up. Really smart undercharge from Wadaj. I, I think this is a total mistake throwing my Psychic. Because all this does is create more time in the switch clock for Wadaj to potentially catch here. His switch timer is up. It's really a coin flip. He might have not known if I had Blast Burn. He might have thought I only had Claw. I'm not sure. No, he probably knew I had Blast Burn, actually. And he just maybe was gambling that I wouldn't throw right away because I was anticipating the catch. So just kind of a really a 50-50 coin flip there. And just like that. One kind of cool thing is we did hand with Dodge his first match loss in like 85 years. That's an exaggeration. But first match loss for him since Fort Wayne. 
um, in 3-0 fashion. And that's going to reset the bracket and make this a true best of five for the championship. Game number one, bracket reset, tough lead. Licky into Umbreon. Charizard is my safest Pokemon. I safe swap it here. I'm really debating whether I want to commit a shield or not. I don't commit a shield. Umbreon pacing towards its its second foul play. I get off the blast burn. He's going to let it go. And Wadah is kind of understanding when you kind of want to just abandon timing and put the pressure on. Like, if he allows... If he does correct timing there, he allows me to get to another move. So, just kind of understanding when it's better to forget the timing and put the pressure on. I'm only going to get off one move here, so I go for the hard-hitting blast burn. And then this is just kind of brutal. Because Charizard has this energy lead, and it's like... Hmm... Like, what if it's Dugong in the back, and I come in Licky, and then I just lose. So, I decided to come in with Altaria. Um, and the Claw does almost half of the remaining health. So, this is pretty brutal. Maybe if I shielded this, I would have had a chance, actually. Maybe if I shielded that. Yeah, he was surprised I didn't shield. So yeah, I think I had to shield that to give myself a chance. I think I was just concerned it was Dugong in the back. Um, but this is just a little bit too much ground for Lickitung to cover. Even though this is a solid matchup for Lickitung against the Cresselia. So yeah. You know what's funny is the first time watching this game back, I... I didn't really feel like I had any play, but I think I did have play if I shielded that move there. Might have had a chance still. Mm -hmm. Moonblast coming through. And this might just be a little thing, but like Wadaj with his high understanding of like how much damage something's going to do. Ends up going for the double grass knot here. Most efficient method of taking out my Lickitung here, rather than like going for a Moonblast and then a Grass Knot. Knows that double Grass Knot should be enough. And uh, I'm just going to play this out. Ow. I throw on CMP, but like, yeah, it doesn't really matter. And after getting swept... That's got to be like a, a confidence boost for Wadaj. Well, I mean, I, I I don't mean to say it like that. Sorry. Like, who needs a confidence? He's freaking 15-0 and 0 in the last 15 matches before. Like, the kid doesn't need a confidence boost. At one point in time, maybe. After like nine regionals of falling short. Maybe he needed a confidence boost, and Hartford was that confidence boost. But here we go. Game two. I make the adjustment to Reggie in the back. I know Charizard is coming every game, right? I know Charizard is coming every game from him. Charizard is very good against my team as well as his. Um, so I was reluctant to bring the Registeel. Because if Registeel gets locked on Charizard, you're not in for a fun time. It's the opposite of fun. So I was reluctant to bring the Registeel against Wadaj, knowing Charizard's coming every game. But I brought it here in game number two of the bracket reset. I was able to bait him with the Claw again. And now I'm going for the Blast Burn. This time, Wadaj actually elects to let it go. And then he throws the Icy, and I'm like, hmm, I'm going to let it go. Because I can lock on down the Dugong. And if there is a Charizard, I'm going to have an energy lead. And also, once Dugong is gone, Altaria is good. So, this is solid for me. I was a little bit slow on the swap, but I'm hoping I can get to a Sky Attack here before the Double Claw. First Claw. And, this, and now I get Sky Attack right before the second Claw. 
This is going to force a shield out of Wadaj. And then some people were curious why I shield this knowing Wadaj is going to get to another claw. It's because I just need a few more dragon breaths to make this thing in lock on down range. If I let this go, this is not an easy lock on down for Reggie. Now I can lock on down. And unless it's like... Well, actually, this is kind of risky because, like, imagine if this was, uh, imagine if it was, like, Quag or Toxicroak and back, I'd be screwed. But luckily, it's the Umbreon. He went ABA weak to Reggie a few times. In comes Umbreon. Very straightforward. All I, all I have to do is just not allow the catch. Boom. I allow the dang catch. Just a really inexcusable type mistake blunder from me. Um, nerves. I don't know. So, yeah, that's something I got to clean up right there because, like, if that changed the outcome of this match, that would have been definitely a haunting uh, type of mistake. But Red of Steel, pretty dominant here against Umbreon. Um, some people were wondering why I Zap Cannon did not Focus Blast. In my opinion, there's actually zero reason to Focus Blast first because you're going to need two moves anyway, so... Zero reason to focus blast there. I guess the only potential reason, I take that back, the one reason would be if I was worried that, uh, as he last resort BMs, and we have a good chuckle, the one reason would be if I was afraid I would get outpaced so much that, like, I needed that one turn quicker of double focus blast versus 16 turn zap cannon, but no reason to uh, not zap cannon there first to, to debuff the damage. Because once I got the debuff, then it was over. And we tied things up one to one. Now it's basically a best two out of three. Uh, they do a little instant replay here to show his catch, which, uh, man, how did I have the half turn reaction on the Charizard snipe versus the Sky Attack? And then I was so slow to react right there. That's crazy, dude. Wild. Game three. Not a good lead. Expert tips with Rise. Altaria into Dugong's not a good lead. I swap into Zard. He's going to stay in to debuff me. Stays in for a while. Go for the Blast Burn. He's thinking about shielding. And he does shield, but because of the timing, he was like, finally, he didn't bait me. That's funny. I didn't even realize that. It's another Blast Burn here. He actually stores the Icy for later and goes in with his own Zard. He's going to commit his second shield, but in doing so, has a lot of energy here to threaten. And in my head, I, I can't come in Reggie, right? So I have to come in Alt. But the problem here is there's a quag in the back as he made a beautiful adjustment. And, uh... Yeah, another claw coming through here. Gonna get off my sky attack to get rid of the Charizard. Now here, I thought about catching the Icy Wind that he's probably going to throw right away. But I also didn't want to give him a chance to like debuff my Reggie and then just like dominate. I thought maybe it was like, who knows, it could have been Umbreon, right? And like debuffing the Reggie could have been bad for me. So Wadaj knows he has it here. I have been saying this weekend, I've been pretty proud about the way I played. One regret is not zap cannoning here for some BM fun. I should have I should have zapped here. I should have zapped here for the laughs. But I also kind of wanted to see how much Focus Blast did if he brought Quag again. And the Mud Bomb here is going to give Wadaj a 2-1 to one lead. Wadaj one game away 
from being the North American International Champion. A little close up on the Pikachu trophies. Thinking things over, and here we go. Tough lead for me in game four. Medi into Charizard. I swap into my own Charizard. He throws right away, as you should. Gonna shield up the Dragon Claw here. I kind of expect him to dip into something. He dips into Umbreon, and out of all the matches, this is like one of the few ones that I'll say I think Wadaj misplayed. Um, and you're gonna see it in just a second. And I'm sure he would probably tell you the same thing. So he throws the foul play here, and you're going to see him undercharge the foul play. And uh, then he is surprised. I, my, my, like, obvious reaction is I think he, I think he expected it to do more still. But this actually puts me right back in the game because now I get that off. I get the shield back, and I can absorb two foul plays with Medicham here and get the counter down and have energy to threaten his Charizard. And all of a sudden, I'm in a pretty decent spot. Foul play. Connects. Umbreon does get to another, but that's okay. I do want to throw Ice Punch. I figured like Ice Punch does enough where I could lick down after. I swap immediately into Licky. Um, he swaps Dugong. Who knows? Maybe he would have been slightly better like baiting Claw there. But because of my head start, I'm able to get off the Power Whip before a debuff, which is pretty nice for this matchup. Power Whip. Lands. I see wind coming through. He is going to outpace me here. Um, so I'm going to be really patient. Because I knew Body Slam wouldn't be enough to knock out there. So I'm in a solid spot. But I'm extra careful here in the end game. I know he's 5 off. So what I'm going to do here is double up on Body Slam. Body Slam does knock out, and I actually save the next Body Slam because this way, even if he, like, farmed me down here, I would have a Body Slam loaded plus the shield, and uh, it wouldn't have mattered. So he kind of went for, like, the farm down as a, as a potential win con, um, and I just get to the Ice Punch there, and that sets up a decisive Game 5. Whoever wins this game is your North American International Pokemon Go Champion. $5,000 reward for first. $2,500 for second. And it's going to be decided by a Charizard mirror match. And I think... I, I don't want to say what Wadaj is thinking because I don't know for sure, but it seemed like both of us kind of ran our safest lines. Umbreon is quite safe against my team. It has soft losses, doesn't really have any hard losses. Dugong, um, similarly, like has play against everything, even though Reggie's not very good again for it. Zard, very safe against my whole team. For me, Charizard's very safe against his whole team. Licky pretty safe only really afraid of the umbreon because i know toxicroak isn't really coming against my team and uh altaria really only afraid of dugong and here we go charizard mirror i'm confident that i win cmp i throw right away so immediately i'm in the driver's seat here because my charizard wins cmp now, I also know how dangerous Charizard is for me with its energy. So what I don't want to happen here is allow him to catch a claw on something like an Umbreon or a Dugong and have the energy stored for later. 
because that could be tough for me. So I actually don't throw right away, and I do regret not throwing right away here. I think that would have been the better decision by me. But I do say that in like hindsight's 2020, right? Because let's say I did throw right away and he caught it on Umbreon. Could have been kind of awkward. But no, maybe I could have like banked a move anyway, so. Perhaps not. Casters were kind of surprised I did four wing attacks. They thought they weren't sure I was going to live that last ice shard. In the moment, I thought I definitely was, so I wasn't too concerned about that. He shields the blast burn. All shields are down, but this dugong now has a four ice shard head start. On paper, I have a slightly positive matchup Lickitung against Dugong. I have a slightly positive matchup Altaria against Umbreon. A lot of people thought I was in a commanding spot at this point. He banks the icy win. Underrated play from Wadaj. Underrated play from Wadaj. Didn't chip. Didn't chip with the icy wind and then go. Didn't chip with the drill and then go. Had the foresight to know he'd rather save that for the end game when I'm going to be switch locked and can't clear the debuff. Underrated play. May seem small, but an underrated play from Wadash. Foul play coming through. Get off my Moonblast. How about the timing, by the way? How about the timing on these one-turn moves? <laughs> Throwing after two Dragon Breaths. Moonblast connects. Wadash is going to get off double foul play here. Foul play is going to connect here with my Altaria. And now here was a very awkward decision for me to make. Look at the health here on my Altaria. I'm thinking about... I'm looking at my switch timer. I'm thinking, is there any way I can keep dragon breathing and then get out into my Lickitung and then maybe save the sky attack for later? But if I do that, do I run the risk of Umbreon hitting my Lickitung with a foul play and then Dugong can two-shot me. So a really awkward situation here. I think there's a slight possibility I could have kept farming and saved the Sky Attack. But instead, I thought the safer play was just get rid of Umbreon, swap Licky, and then maybe I can clear my debuff later in the game. Wadaj throws his Icy Wind immediately. Very wise. And here is the one other decision. This minute detail I could have potentially done differently in this game. Is he's three Ice Shards off from the next debuff, the next Icy Wind. I'm more than that. I'm more than nine turns away at the moment from Power Whip. If I had the Foresight... To know I might only get to a power whip plus body slam. I could have body slammed here while I'm only single debuffed. But I actually didn't even consider that in the moment. In the moment, I didn't even think about that. I was only set on the power whip. And I know at the moment, okay, this is bad. This is bad that he got two debuffs now. But this is going to be a photo finish. I throw with perfect timing. So at least I don't have that to be upset about. <laughs> I never messed up the timing here. Power Whip connects. And as you can see from that damage from the Power Whip, there's just no way Body Slam is enough. There's just no way Body Slam enough. With Dodge knowing that Drill Run does slightly more, goes for the harder hitting Drill Run. And at this moment in time, I have this chunk of health. I'm thinking if I can live one Ice Shard... I win. If I can just live one Ice Shard, I win. And I don't. I don't. And Wadaj is your grand champion. And congrats to the kid, man. And here's the thing. Some people were saying I should have gone for Body Slam plus Dragon Breath. There's no way the Body Slam KOs. And I don't think three Dragon Breaths plus Body Slam would have KO'd. 
maybe it would have been close. If I threw Body Slam, double debuff right at this moment, maybe it's close. But here's the thing, guys. I can, I can live peacefully with this decision here. Because if I had settled for Body Slam, and then Dragon Breath wasn't enough and I lose... I'm never gonna I'm never gonna stop wondering what if I made the power whip. Cause power whip was the win con here. And I was two licks off. One lick, two licks. But because of the mechanics, the damage will typically register on that last turn. Um sometimes you will get off that power whip, sometimes you won't. Usually you don't get it off. And uh that's how close the margin was in this game to who's the NAIC champion. But here's the thing, guys. As Wadaj celebrates. And wow! Wadaj comes out of nowhere with the Dugong. The proper play to throw the drill run. To I say congrats. And to take out the Altaria. He is able to secure victory and become the first player in Pokemon Go history to win a regional and an international championship. Also the first player ever. I think Butters meant this season because um, Axon has done that. Axon has won an international and a and a regional, but first player to do that in the same season is insane. And um, I'll get to the award ceremony to close it off in just a bit, but I'm proud of Wadaj because when I won the Knoxville Regional, a lot of the storyline that the commentators kept saying is, Rise has come so close so many times. He's been there so many times. It just always falls short. It was my third regional of the season. <laughs> I did Arlington. I got third. I did Orlando. I got fifth. And in my third attempt, I won Knoxville. So yes, it was a couple of tough losses that I had to overcome. Wadaj was a whole nother level of perseverance because I think he did nine regionals before finally towards the end of the season sweeping Hartford, probably arguably the most stacked of the entire season. Um, so just another level of perseverance. And then from struggling throughout the entire course of the season to get that qualifying spot, getting so many top eights, I think maybe like five top eights, and then finally getting it and then going on and winning NAIC back-to-back -back champion. Just an incredible story. And for me personally, there have been a lot of moments where even like I refuse to watch back the match of a tournament because it's like I know what I did wrong and I just don't want to relive it. I can leave happy with how I played here. As I pointed out in that decisive game five, there were a few minute decisions here and there. It, perhaps I throw my Dragon Claw right away on Zard. I'm in a better spot. Perhaps if I committed to a farm down on Zard, I'm in a better spot. Perhaps if I had the foresight to body slam when it was only single debuffed and then power whip, I win. I think those are all really minute things that would be lovely to have been able to maybe potentially do. But it gives me the hope that I can become even better at this game. And with Worlds coming up, we'll see how I perform there. So, congratulations to Wadaj. And we do a little uh, award. Wadaj does his interview. And then there's a little trophy presentation for the top three here. And it's a pretty cool picture. So, I was just hoping... Um, I was just hoping to redeem my 2-2 two and two performance in Milwaukee with a solid performance, a solid showing at NAIC. So I'm very happy with uh, a second place finish. Especially, I had to win four consecutive matches just to be in that situation, right? So if you're thinking I'm sad that I was one game away from winning it all, um, quite the contrary, man. I'm proud of... I, I lost to Stark in the winner's semis, and I had to win four consecutive matches just to put myself in that situation to have a chance to win the whole thing. And like I said, uh, with some of those decisions in the final set, I think I still have room for improvement as a battler. And uh, we'll try and keep on marching forward. Long video. Longest I've ever done. Basically a stream, but in video form. Thank you guys for watching. Why am I still talking in this cadence? Find out next time.
like, and subscribe, and I'll see you later.